Hello friends. Today we're doing a reading vlog that I have put off for years and years and years and years. And that is stopping my screen time for reading. <laughs> it's almost time for Meg to serve. I'm late to this. As we all know, like everyone and their mother has done this reading vlog. I have not because I'm scared. I don't like the idea <laughs> of being told I have to read for this many hours a day. And it's gonna be hours because I do spend a lot of time on my phone. Mm. I do, I do, I do. But like, here's the thing. I watch a lot of YouTube, right? I, I watch a lot of YouTube. I often have a YouTube video up when I'm cooking or doing the laundry. It's either that or an audiobook, right? Are the two things I'm consuming. And YouTube means your phone's open. Sometimes my phone will be open while I'm doing other things. Anyway, that's not, I don't need to defend myself. But anyways, I have never done this vlog because I have been too afraid, but I think that it's time. So today we're gonna be doing a week of swapping my screen time for reading every single day I have to read the amount of time I was on my phone a week before. I've seen a few people do it different ways. Some people do it, they have to read like the average screen time amount every day. But I think it's more fun to get a bit of variation. So we're gonna be doing like what I was, was what day is it today? It's Thursday. <laughs> Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. How long I was on my phone last Thursday is how much we have to read today and so on and so forth. So, yeah, are we ready? We're gonna go find out what those what those times are together, and then we'll discuss the books that I'm planning to read for this video. I'm, I'm intrigued to see whether it feels like I'm reading a lot or whether it doesn't feel like I'm reading a lot. Do I read more than this usually? Like, is this gonna be a walk in the park or is it gonna be hard? I don't know. So last Thursday, is that last Thursday? I guess it is. <laughs> Last Thursday, I spent four hours on my phone. So we have to read today for a nice round four hours. Oh, one thing I'm gonna say is, I'm not gonna be physically reading. I will often, I'm counting listening to an audiobook. And when I listen to an audiobook without physically reading also, I'm reading slower. I read at a slower pace. So it's not gonna be four hours. If my page counts, I'm like Megan, that's low. Um, I'm not gonna be necessarily like physically reading for four hours every day. I will be in, I will be counting the moments where I'm listening to an audiobook whilst I'm doing a dishwasher, whilst I'm cooking, etc. Anyways, four hours of reading today. It's currently quarter past two and I don't have a ton of other plans today. I've got reading sprints my patrons tonight, which is very well timed. I would like to try and end it when I'm ending the reading sprint, although I am gonna then cook dinner. So, you know, we got a bit of, got a bit of leeway, but I would like, the reading sprints are at five. So I've got a couple hours before then, and I would like to get some reading done before that, but I have got a few other things I need to do. Anyways, tomorrow, Friday, shorter, 2 hours and 53 minutes. What was I doing when there's that big spike? I must've been watching, oh, that's like dinner time. I just said, I threw caution to the wind. <laughs> and I obviously watched something on my phone whilst I was cooking dens. That's probably what that big spike in the day is. Like. Otherwise, that was a really low day. Saturday, four hours and 23 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this is a lot of reading every day. Sunday, okay, no, okay. Sunday is the only day we're not going off of the, to the total because that says five hours and 57 minutes. However, you may zero in there on one hours and 10 minutes on a health and fitness app. That is all trails, as you can see. Don't look at Royal Match. That's my audiobook. <laughs> I, me and Tom were on a walk and he had my phone and he was using that app to like see our course for the walk. So I was not on my phone, Your Honor. Your Honor, it's false evidence. We're just normal men. What do you mean normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> so we're gonna take that off. So what is that? That's four hours and 47 minutes, yeah? Four hours and 47 minutes I have to read on Sunday. Monday, oh, 5,013, we're across the five hour threshold. Shit. Then Tuesday, four hours and four minutes, oh dear. And yesterday, four hours and 54. So some of our higher ones are on the end there. Interesting, In I spent that much time on Instagram? What am I doing? Get. Get a grip, leave my life Instagram. In terms of books we're gonna be reading, we have three books here that have been on TBR Cluedo so far this year that I do not have set plans to read. So we've got Heli and Death, we've got How to Kill Your Family and A Curious Beginning. So I would like to use this vlog to get round to these. However, another, another book, whenever I've envisaged doing this vlog, a book I always picture myself reading is Night Film by Marisha Pestle because I don't think if I don't read it in this video, I don't think I'm never gonna read this book. <laughs> I'm just terrified of it. It's very long. It's about 600 pages. The audiobook is like 23 hours long. <gasps> so um, I think I'm gonna start with this in this vlog and 
I want to prioritize this because I really want to read this. This has been a five star prediction for me in the past, but it still is. I don't know why I'm talking as if it's no longer a five star prediction, but this is a five star prediction for me and I want to read it, but it's so long that I feel like I'll always be put off. However, I think if I do it in a vlog where I'm probably gonna be reading quite a bit, I think this would be the perfect time to tackle it. So that's what we're gonna be starting today. I'm gonna go make some late lunch and start the audiobook, and I'll probably check in with you when I'm starting reading sprints later because I'll probably read a little bit, do a little bit of work, do reading sprints, and then we will see where we are. That is the plan. This is our TBR. I feel like this will probably be the amount of books we're gonna get through, right? I think we're gonna read roughly this amount or something close. And I'm gonna go start the audiobook for Night Film. I'll probably just listen to the audiobook for a bit and then I'll pick it up physically when we've got reading sprints and we will see how we do. a good day we had reading sprints and then we just had dinner and it is now it's about 10 o'clock i think yeah quarter past 10 i have done oh let me show you the proof i gotta show you the proof i've got to show you my hard work <laughs> um i read for four hours and one minute it was how much i read for focus please on her I did it! And what page of night film am I up to? I'm up to page 200, exactly, actually no, 201. Page 201 of night film, and I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I am loving, loving this book. I am having so much fun. Oh, guys, <laughs> I'm having the best time ever reading this book. Now listen, four hours to read 200 pages is not, the quickest. However, some of that, quite a lot of today, was me listening to the audiobook whilst I did other things like cooking, etc. We open up with a girly dice, right? It seems that she k-worded herself and alived herself. She is the daughter of this infamous cult horror movie director right, that is very secretive, no one knows much about him, he's got all these fans who like have all these conspiracy theories, and there's this journalist who once said that he was like bad as these killers because this guy's films are like spawned copycat killers of the horror movies, etc. And so this guy is known for being like in opposition to this director, and he decides, oh, I'm gonna investigate, <laughs> I'm gonna investigate the death of this girl. And then he's kind of formed this unlikely group of detectives with him, and I'm loving it. If you guys don't know, it's mixed media, baby. Look at these pages, look at the, <sighs> throughout, throughout, there's loads of stuff. I mean, there's also chunks where it's just loads of text, but there's also, and I'm just having so much fun. I love mixed media. I love mixed media. Why can't every book be mixed media? It's just so fun. Like giving me photographs and being like, oh my God, this is Cordova spotted in a 1960s ballroom. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you got me it's your, no, it's your neck. You it got does. me fucking gagging. No. I just, listen, I think, I think my love for mixed media comes from I was, I was a drama kid, right? I was a theater kid, right? I did drama lessons from when I was like 
four years old. I did drama all the way up to A level at school. I just, and when I did drama at A level in particular, I, when I was making a show, right? Cause when you did drama at A level, you have to be like, you have to stage stuff, you have to direct stuff, you have to like come up with a concept. I just love creating a moment. I love a concept, I love a concept. I love a dramatic concept. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you're not just there acting shit out. You've got a motive, you've got a reason, you've got a whole creative vision. And I feel like that's what mixed media often gives me. I just think it's doing it so well. And I also think this is written really, really, really well. I think it's written really well. I've never read anything from Rosha Pestle before, but this book, it's flying by considering I've read 200 pages. Like that's not bad during the day. I, if I could finish this in three days for a 600 page book, I think that's pretty impressive. I just can't stop reading it. I just can't stop reading it. I can't stop turning a page. I'm so excited. This is perfect. This is the perfect book for this reading vlog. I am so happy. I'm having so much fun and I have so many questions about her and her dad and the reasons behind everything and the truth behind everything and there's so many little interesting seeds being laid as to what could be going on behind the scenes behind these secretive scenes and why she would do what she has i mean has she been murdered what happened or was she not like what <laughs> just so many questions being laid i am having so much fun i just think it's just it's everything i want it's everything i want oh i'm loving it <laughs> I don't know what else to say to you. I'm loving the cast of characters we built up, but just the mixed media, babes. The mixed media does it for me. Like, give me an email. Give me a website with a photo. <sighs> I don't think I can explain to you. I'm getting five star feelings. I'm getting five star feelings from this. I'm getting, mm, perhaps a five star, perhaps a five star in the making. So yeah, tomorrow hopefully we'll make a good chunk of the way through it. But listen, reading 20 pages of today, I'm not upset about it. And it is only day one. But I did not feel like it was a struggle reading the amount I did. However, I may be saying something different by the end of this vlog. It's only the first day, <laughs> but I'm feeling great. I'm having the best time ever. So I'll see you tomorrow in the morning, but we are off to a wonderful, wonderful start. Good morning, friends. It's Friday, Friday. Um, okay. Okay, today is our shortest reading time. I just checked, we've got to read for two hours and 53 minutes. It's very specific now, we get into like specific numbers. It was a nice round four, four hours yesterday. Um, yeah, two hours and 53 minutes today. So it's our shortest amount of reading we've got to do any day. I'm gonna to go to Waterstones today. I'm gonna to go to the Waterstones Cafe and read. Now I can't promise you how much I'm gonna film because it kind of stresses me out a little bit. I may, I'm gonna bring my camera, but I may just film stuff on my phone because it's a little bit less, you know, makes people a little bit less side eye to like whip out my phone and film because they think, oh, she's just taking a cute Instagram story or whatever. Whipping out my camera, they're like, ah. Uh. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and film. I'm also gonna have a little browse for books. If I see any I wanna buy, I'm gonna let myself buy them because I have not bought any books this year yet that weren't for specific videos. I'm feeling like if they have a copy of The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden, I will probably pick it up. <laughs> I will probably pick it up because I'm very excited for that one. So yeah, that's all I'm thinking of getting if they have it, but I'm gonna have a little browse in the books, but then I'm gonna go to a cafe. I'm gonna have lunch in the cafe. I might also have like a hot chocolate later. I'm gonna like stay there for quite a while. I'm gonna do some editing there. So I might edit first and then read or read and then edit. I don't know. I'm going to spend probably quite a lot of my day there now today. My goal is to read more physically today. I mean, I did read quite a lot physically yesterday, but then I like cooked and did stuff where I listened to the audiobook. Whereas a lot of this section is like, we're, we got to get through it. You know what I mean? It's like not a lot of mixed media, whereas there is a lot towards the end. I would like to read like another 200 pages today, even though we've got a bit less time. If I read more physically, we can read more per hour. Um, so yeah, let's see how much reading we get done. I'm going to go go to Waterstones, wish me luck, wish I don't get too scared. It may just be phone footage. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I, I feel different <laughs> filming on my phone versus like <laughs> filming on my camera. Anyways, I love you guys. Let's go have a nice day at Waterstones. I'm so excited. Easy rider on the highway. Station wagon going slow Windows open, you are basking In the bluegrass radio mm. It is easy now to see you With your hand out on Keep this folded at the corner 
Hello friends, good evening. It's the end of the day. I have read for my allotted amount today. I actually went three minutes over, so sorry. <laughs> I couldn't contain myself, no. I was listening to the audiobook whilst I was making dinner and I went over the timer without realizing it. So I'm still loving it. I'm still loving it. We've got, we've got stuff to talk about, however. I do wanna just acknowledge, I chatted this big game about going to the Waterstones Cafe yesterday. I went there, the cafe was shut. The cafe was shut, so I was very upset about it. I had to go elsewhere for lunch. It was a very traumatic experience. <laughs> This is what trauma looks like. But I did pick up two books to cheer myself up. I just show you quickly. You saw me pick them up. I didn't film anything else in the Waterstones. I was too upset. I was fuming. <laughs> My plans for the day have been ruined. No, I picked up The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden, which I said I would. Look at the spread of it. I'm so excited to read this. I'm like buying these books. I'm like, should I sack the other, the rest of the TBR in and just read these books right now? But they're on TBR Cluedo. They're on TBR Cluedo, so I'm like morally obliged to read them. I am so excited for this. I feel like I've heard wonderful reviews. And then I spotted a book that somehow, I'd somehow missed off of my like new releases spreadsheet. I'd missed off of my most anticipate releases for the start of this year video that I did. But I'd followed the author on Twitter for years since this book was announced. Since it was like in the, I don't know, Publishers Weekly, whatever that like book announcement thing is. And I spotted it. It is Miss Austin Investigates by Jessica Ball. Excuse me? A murder mystery with Jane Austen as the detective! <laughs> this is a potential mother. Oh, what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What do you expect me to do? What do you expect me to do? You expect me to not buy this? You expect me to not buy this? Also, I had 10 pounds credit on my Waterstones card and then I paid for the rest in cash. So like, these were free. These were free. So yeah, I'm very excited to read both of these, but let's talk about night film. I am still loving it. I'm still loving it. I'm still loving it. I'm still loving it. This is making me think of like, I do, I don't read them very often because I'm scared off, but I love a big book. <laughs> you stop insinuating things, please. <laughs> I love a big book. Like it's making me remember why I love so many books that I love. I, I love spending time with a long book. I'm thinking back to like some of the Jade War, Jade Legacy books or The Secret History or all my other favorite books that are really long. I just, sometimes I love a long book where you really, there's just, if I'm enjoying it, here's the thing, it could go wrong, because if you're bored, you're bored. But if I'm enjoying it, I love just how into the depth of the story we get to go. I always say, I don't, for me, a book should be like a tree. We should have the main trunk of a story, but we should have little branches, and those branches break off into different branches. Or like, this is why I like Thursday Medical Club, right? I feel like those books constantly have little, little diversions on it. I hate when a book is just like, just, nothing you know what i mean it's just like one line whereas there's probably some parts of this that aren't gonna be relevant but it's building up this complex mystery of cordova and this family and what happened to ashley and the secrets and i'm just i'm so enjoying it i'm so enjoying it i love how we're getting to get into the depth of these characters and the storyline and the mystery and like I'm loving it. I need to read more long books. I mean, this might be the longest book I read this year. I think this is longer than the longest book I read last year. It's like 580 pages. I am just adoring it. I'm adoring it. I'm having so much fun. Tomorrow we have, I just had a look. Tomorrow we have, I've already forgotten. <laughs> We've got to read for four hours and 23 minutes tomorrow. At the, my physical reading speed, I've got four hours and four minutes left of the audio. So the goal is to finish this tomorrow. Also, I just want to say, the other day I posted my February wrap up and in it, I'm talking about how a lot of the books I read, I have the physical and the audio. And I'm like, oh, it's not sustainable. I know I should be not reading as many audio books ever. And some people in the comments think I'm like, bashing on audiobooks as a form of reading. Absolutely not. I am the biggest defender of audiobooks you've ever met in your life. Whenever I meet anyone who's like, audiobooks are not for reading, I pounce on them like a tiger. I, I won't have it. I am the biggest proponent of reading with audiobooks. What I'm talking about is how it's not financially sustainable. And a lot of the books, a lot of the audiobooks I read last month when I was talking about that though, I got from either my library or from Everand. So I didn't pay for them individually. This one's on Everand. But sometimes like the books I want to read, <laughs> the audiobook is only on Audible. And it's not financially sustainable to buy every audiobook, nor do I want to like create the perception that like, you know, it's different for me because it's like, this is my job. So like, I can kind of justify it that way, but I don't want to create a perception that like everyone should always have an audio book. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I say that shit. I'm not like, people shouldn't use audio books. They're not real reading. I'm not saying any of that. I love audio books. That is, I'm more saying, Megan, 
need to come back because it's like not a financially sustainable move. So I just wanted to clear that up because I got a few comments. I'm like, that is, it never crossed my mind that people could think that's what I meant because I'm the biggest fan of audiobooks. But I did not explain myself correctly. So anyways, I'm gonna continue listening to audiobook for this and reading it physically. I feel like it's gonna be a five star. I feel like it's gonna be a five star. I am absolutely loving it. There's nothing else to say. I am probably not gonna check in with you tomorrow till I finished it. Cause I just, this is the kind of book that I just, I've already spoken to you quite a bit about it. I just want to finish it and I don't know what I think. So I'll see you tomorrow evening after four hours and 23 minutes of reading. <sighs> and hopefully I'll finish it. Hopefully I will finish this book. And all of our other books are going to be so fast in comparison to this. But we'll have read a 600 page book in three days. That's pretty impressive. Anyways, I'll see you in the morning. No, not in the morning, tomorrow evening. <laughs> Bye. It is Saturday evening. I have had a bit of a weird day. I woke up feeling like I was coming down with something. Whenever I'm starting to get ill, my like glands in my throat, I've, talk, I've spoken about this before, they like swell up and get really painful and they were so painful today. So I've spent the whole day basically just uh, reading and sleeping. I napped twice. I never nap anymore, but I napped twice. So I was kind of just trying to nip it in the bud because I don't want to be ill for the rest of this vlog. So I just thought if I take it chill today, then I can be successful in the rest of the vlog. I need to go brush my hair, hang on. <laughs> also, I keep filming with you whenever I've literally just eaten dinner, but I've got a High School Musical movie night, High School Musical 3 movie night in eight minutes <laughs> with my patrons. So I have to film now, but let me show you my timer. I have read for the allotted amount of time today. I read actually, I think for like, three more minutes than I was supposed to. And I finished Night Film. And I'm torn on what to give it, but I think it's just gonna miss out on being a five star and it's gonna be a 4.5. But I think I'm gonna rate it a five on Goodreads, which I have stopped doing. <laughs> I stopped rating 4.5 stars as fives on Goodreads and running them up, but like reserving that for just the, the five stars. But this is so close. I just didn't love this like latter third as much as I love the rest of the book. There's this section, I'd say like 150 pages from the end that's written in a bit of a weird way and it just kind of lost my engagement a little bit. I just stopped caring as much, which is a shame. But I think also with a book as ambitious as this, it is hard to stick the landing completely, right? This book is trying to do so much. Like, look at how excited I was getting whilst reading it. Oh, my glands are bad again. Oh my God, I've got to do High School Musical Movie Night. <gasps> Hopefully I'll survive. <laughs> I feel ill, I've got to sleep all night. <laughs> Yeah, it's trying to do so much. It's leaving so many little trails of things that like, I don't necessarily blame it if it doesn't completely stick landing. I can understand why some people wouldn't enjoy like the end ending. I did, I think it's a pretty fitting way to end the book, but I can see why some people wouldn't enjoy that. But I loved this and also the length wasn't a problem for me. I loved how long it was. I loved how long we got to spend with these characters. I really grew to love our characters. There's a few bits of it I'm like, there's like a romance, rom no, not a romance, there's a romantic interest that just does not need to be there. I was like, oh God, <laughs> stop it. Release me from these shackles of this happening in books. But I'm so glad I read this in this video. Otherwise I probably would never have read it because it is such a daunting task, but I've read it in three days. I think that's pretty impressive for like a 600 page book. And um, I really did enjoy it. I think the writing's very fun. I'm interested in trying more from Marisha Pestle. I think she's only got two other books. So let me know. Are they all quite different? They, none of the others give me the same vibe as this. I know one's called Never World Wake and then there's her debut. I don't know what that's called. On the whole, this is a very, very impressive book. I am kind of sad it hasn't quite made it to a five star. And I was like, kind of, should I just like give it a five? But if I'm honest with myself, it hasn't been, that last third, it started to get a little bit like trapped by the, the amazing traps it had laid throughout the rest of the book. Does that make sense? And the, it, the weirdly written bit kind of lost me a little bit. I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't know if they like the route we're going down. And I was scared it was gonna be that for the whole book, but it wasn't, it was like a little section, but still, it lost me a little bit. So we have to decide what we're gonna read tomorrow. I remembered also that Murder Isn't Easy, which is a nonfiction about the forensics of Agatha Christie is on TBR Cluedo, and I have not got plans to read that. So these are our four options. Here's the thing. These three are all like, I think could be five stars, right? I think could be a similar level of enjoyment to this. So you'd think I wanna pick these up, but I feel like after enjoying a book like that so much, for me, it's a lot of pressure to like pick up something I think is gonna have to try and match that. <laughs> Here's, this is why I'm not a mood reader. This is stressing me out trying to figure out what order to read these books in, or like, I'm probably not gonna read them all, so which ones to read? Oh my God, it's stressing me out. I just need to be told what to read. I can't. 
can't make this decision, please. I can't make this decision. I thought about giving my patrons the vote, but I know they're going to pick a curious beginning. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. I am leaning towards how to kill your family. Because when I put on my TV, loads of you told me you didn't like it. Loads of you told me you didn't like it. So I'm kind of tempted to go for a book I don't think I'm going to enjoy as much. And just try to bash it out quickly and then pick up one of these ones that I think I'm going to enjoy more. I know that does not make a lot of sense. Okay, I'm aware of that. I'm aware that doesn't make a lot of sense because these are all books I'm more excited for, but I think I'm more likely as well to like make room for these in other videos, whereas this could just be on TV Alcuna and get kicked down the path. So I'm leaning towards reading this. I mean, Richard Osman blurbed it saying, I loved this book. That gives me hope. <laughs> Might be misplaced hope, but it gives me hope. We're three days into this. I'm often finding myself, especially yesterday, which was my shortest reading day. I really wanted to read more yesterday. I had to stop myself. Today, not so much. Today was like a little bit of a weird day because I didn't feel very well. But I'm often finding myself wanting to read more. I'm probably going to regret saying that because tomorrow's our longest day yet, isn't it? It's like four hours 40 or something. So we shall see. I have got the audiobook for this on Everand. We shall see what I pick up. But I am leaning towards this because I feel like I just need to read something that I haven't got any pressure around the corner so that I could not forget mm. pink azaleas by your driveway hello friends I've just realized I'm sitting in pretty much the same place as last night's clip but we have to live with that we're set up here now it is Sunday we did a lot of walking today me and Tom we walked like 10k so I'm very tired I have not read for the full amount of time yet I am on two hours and 58 minutes. So I've got like an hour and 45 minute left of reading to go, but it's like eight o'clock. So by the time <laughs> I finish reading, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna close those book pages and go, cause we all know I'm a grandma. I like to go to sleep very early. So you're not gonna see me again tonight. However, I am about halfway through How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. I decided to pick this one up next. Cause I did want something where I was like, no pressure. You know what I mean? I've read this very slowly. I've pretty much just read this via the audiobook today. And it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But here's the thing. I don't care. I kind of went into it with that expectation, right? Because I, when you've been reading a lot of, oh, they're just fine books, you know, it gets annoying. But when you're coming off of a book or something great, it, it doesn't bother me as much. So in this, we're basically following a girly who's killing her family. I don't believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. Basically, she was raised by her single mother. Her mother has died and she is killing off all the horrible members of her father's rich ass family. Her father's like one of the richest men in the UK. He gave his her mother nada, nothing, refused to recognize her as a daughter. And so she's like, I'm gonna kill this horrible family's lineage off one by motherfucking one. <laughs> so that's what's going on. And I mean, the writing is just fine. Like this is a very popular book in the UK. This is like, you see it in all the supermarkets, like, Deirdre loves this book for some reason, you know? <laughs> I think the writing is okay. The character is annoying, right? She's annoying, but she's not meant to be a likable character. But like, she is a, she's a bit insufferable. She's a bit insufferable and she doesn't have to be likable. But when you're just in her head, you're so in her head. It's very voicey. It's very like, it's from her perspective, but it's incredibly like, narrated it just gets a bit much you know what i mean like we're basically reading her do these murders over and over again and like reflecting on doing these murders and it, she told us in the beginning there'd be seven and i think we've had four people murdered so far and it's just getting a bit repetitive i'm hearing the same conversation over and over and over again like her tracking them down and figuring out a fun way because each of them like has a way to murder them that's like personal to them she's like how what's the most ideal way i can murder this person because of their characteristics and traits and lifestyle that wouldn't be clocked do you know what i mean i don't want everyone to know that i've murdered them they've all looked kind of like accidents so far and then she like goes to the process of researching and planning and oh i get so nervous but excited before i kill them and uh, it's just getting a bit repetitive and we're just following the same pattern over and over again and it's not very fast paced so here's the thing it's fine it's probably like a three star at the moment i don't think it's egregious but it's not doing anything particularly you know awe inspiring for me but i don't mind that because it kind of feel like it takes some of the heat off those other books down there that like five star predictions it kind of makes me chill out about reading them a little bit more so yeah 
I don't know. I, I It's fine, but am I excited to pick it up? Not really. However, do you know what I am excited for? I got a parcel when I arrived home from the walk today. It's from my Amazon wishlist. I'm very excited to see what it is. So shall we open it together? I have no idea what this is. Someone has very kindly sent me something. We've opened it. I'm I, guys, this is really made my day. Oh my God, there's two books. Oh my God, it's from Kirsty. Kirsty is one of the kindest people on Discord. What has Kirsty sent me? <gasps> Oh my god, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, we've got Night Watching, which Kirstie's was a five star, but then we've also got... <laughs> Ask for Andrea. Kirstie's been trying to get everyone on our Discord, on our Patreon Discord to read this. Oh my god, Kirstie, you're so kind, thank you so much. I have been planning on reading this, and Night Watching was on my TBR, and a thriller that I've heard really, really good things about. This is about a woman who tucks her kids into bed, and but there's someone in the house, and she's like... I think trying to figure out, should she run? Is she gonna hide? What's going on? I think like the first chapter, the first line is there was someone in the house. The drama. Kirsty, thank you so much. Kirsty is always gifting people stuff on the Discord. We, and then we had Kirsty mess where everyone <laughs> banded together to send Kirsty back books. It's honestly one of the most amazing things how the community has grown over there and everyone's making friends and Kirsty has been a really cool part of that. So thank you so much, Kirsty. I'm so excited to read both of these. Oh my goodness. And I, I have never had someone tell me to read a book as much as <laughs> <laughs> to ask for Andrea. So I've got to do it now. I'm very, very excited. This one is about three women who were all murdered by the same man. And I think we're reading from their perspectives. I don't know if they go, I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. I don't know if we're reading before the, before they're murdered or after, but thank you so much. Kirsty. oh my gosh, I've got to go send her a message. So tonight, I'm not going to check in with you again tonight, but I am going to go read for another hour and 45. And I'll probably get close to finishing this tonight. And then I will just finish off in the morning and check in with you. And then we'll decide tomorrow what I'm going to read tomorrow and where we're going to go and if I'm going to do anything, if I'm going to stay at home and read, who knows? The world is our oyster. <laughs> Anyways, I shall see you tomorrow once I have finished this, but let's not expect great things. <laughs>
Asian people, old people, people with dementia, gay people, people with eating disorders, mentally ill people, people who like frogs, rich people, also poor people, teenagers, people who struggle with addiction, stupid people, pret, middle-aged women, people who take baths, pansexual people, people with chronic illnesses, people who care about social issues, influencers of any kind, her mum, One Direction, the reader. So that is very much true. <laughs> It's just this incredibly negative outlook on humanity. I'm not saying books can't have critiques of humanity, but this is just like, dear God, my God, you really, there's nothing, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just a negative fest. And that's just not what I wanna read. I don't, I, I, it's fun to read from an unlikable main character if they've, they're giving me something, they're giving me some drama. But Mark Gurley is just like, <laughs> it's just so negative about everything. And it's just exhausting to read. I also think that the plotting is not good. The story is not paced well. The ending is so, so, so anticlimactic. It's so anticlimactic. Like it is such a disappointing ending to what you've built up throughout the book. It just feels like, dear God, like why have I read this entire book? I am glad I finally read it. It's an interesting book to have become so successful within the British population. I think it's like millennial women, millennial women humor. No, 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 no shame. Um. And I'm not in that age bracket, you know what I mean? Millennials are kind of this elusive age bracket to me because I feel like whenever you're alive, you kind of get to know the ways and habits of like your parents' generation and your generation. And there's usually this generation in the middle where like you don't have a lot of people in your life at that age because of the way like family, ages work. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't have a lot of millennials in my life. So I, I just think that's possibly who this is um, marketed towards. So I'm gonna give it a 2.5. I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever read, but Gurley should go back to who she written for. Guardian, Vogue and Vice. Yep. <laughs> so we've got like an hour and 15 minutes to the reading left to do today. And then we've got two more days of reading. So we're gonna get through as many of these as we can. Now, here's the thing. I am so excited for all of these that I really don't know what to pick. And I, I might go off piece. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. In terms of what I'm gonna pick up next, I've been going back and forth between all three each day. It, throughout the day, I'm like, I'm gonna start this one next. I'm gonna start this one. I'm gonna start this one. For the majority of today, I was thinking I was gonna start a curious beginning next. However, I cannot get my hands on the audiobook anywhere. It's not available seemingly anywhere in the UK. And I think for this challenge, an audiobook is essential. It's really essential, an audiobook, because I need an occasional, like, while I'm cooking to make up that hour in order to, like, get stuff done. So I don't know if we're gonna be reading this in this video. It might have been put aside. I'm excited for both of these, but right now, I am really fancying Murder Isn't Easy, The Forensics of Agatha Christie by Carla Valentine. And I kind of feel like whenever I'm getting a little, you know, little feeling like, oh yeah, I can read some nonfiction, I have to pounce on it. I have to, <laughs> I have to pounce on that feeling because otherwise I could put it off for so long. This I've owned this for a very long time. I've owned this for a very long time and I've been assured there's no spoilers in it. And I'm just feeling like I'm kind of in the mood to read it. And I feel like I have to make hay while the sun shines. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise it could be like another four years. Ooh, and it hasn't been four years. I think I've owned this for like two years. So I think I'm going to pick this up next. It's all about Agatha Christie and her knowledge of forensics, which was so ahead of the... I think I've told you. But when did I tell you about this? I told you about it in TBL Cluedo, but things I know about her. Uh, she invented the phrase scene of the crime. I think that was in... Was it in, I'm not sure if it was in uh, The Mysterious Affair of Styles or Murder on the Links, but it was one of the first Hercule Poirot books was the phrase scene of the crime. She invented that. And she was also, before she started writing during World War One, she was a nurse at a local hospital caring for like injured soldiers. And she developed a really good knowledge of poisons there. She like ran like, she also like wrote a little newspaper about going to the hospital. Anyway, it's very interesting. So that's what I know about her, but we're gonna go much greater into detail on this. And I'm just feeling like a bit of nonfiction. And listen, we all have, I have my non-fiction goal this year, which the goal is to read 12 non-fiction by the year, and I'm already on two. So in order to get a quarter of the way there, that would be wonderful. So yeah, I'm gonna pick this one up next. I'll check in with you probably tonight. I'm gonna go make dinner now. You saw me making the cornflake chicken the other night, but I made it like a peri peri sauce. I'm making it as chicken katsu curry tonight. So I'm gonna go make that and listen to the audio, but I'll probably take up most of my time. I will give you my first impressions. Hello friends, it's bedtime, but I'm just checking in. The dishwasher's on, apologies if that's noisy. I have read for my allotted time and I am, how many pages into this am I? I haven't got a bookmark, but let me try and show you visually. I'm about 56 pages in. So I've made like a good start, but I'm not gonna say any thoughts yet. 
it's too soon. It's too soon. I can't check in this thing with a non-fiction. I have to let the ideas percolate in my brain. I have some thoughts, but I'll share them in your morning. Anyways, I'm going to bed, but I have read for my amount of time. Um, I'm starting to get a bit fed up with this. I've had it. Enough. You know what? Then First couple of days, I was absolutely thriving. Past couple of days, I've been like, I want to do things other than read. You know, I'm just consuming a lot of information. <laughs> I'm just reading for a lot of time every day. But I am also enjoying, or we'll have thoughts at the end, but I'm enjoying not having to read a certain amount, only having to read for a certain amount of time. I think often in my reading, there's a lot of pressure to read, like, I have to read a whole book today. I have to read 100 pages. Like, I have to read this amount today. Whereas I just have to spend a certain amount of time reading. And it's a different, different element. But, like, I just want a day off, you know? Often I'll read, like, really heavily for three days and then maybe not read for a day and then read very heavily like my reading naturally goes to kind of peaks and troughs where my peaks would be even more than I'm reading in a day at the moment um and my troughs would be like nothing and I'm missing those troughs you know because I think my style of reading does work well for me so yeah just girly things anyways let me go read some more tweets about Kate Middleton Kate Middleton conspiracy because I'm very clued up, very deep in it, and then um and then I'm gonna go sleep. Okay, bye. Good evening, friends. Sorry I haven't spoken to you yet today. It's been a very busy day in terms of I filmed a video and edited a video. Also, I just want to say I don't know how much I've worn this in this vlog because I'm this is my favorite hoodie at the moment, but I'm doing a lot of clothes washes. I want we already have a lot of clothes drying space here, so I'm having to do a lot of clothes washes just to, like keep up with the demand. Um, so I've watched this at least once in the course of this vlog, if not more. <laughs> I am halfway through um, Murder Isn't Easy, the forensic I personally by Colonel Valentine. I didn't say that very well. Oh shit, my internet just cut out and I'm on a live stream. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, but there are some caveats. Well, I first thing I wanna say, I'm listening to audiobooks, like with everything in this video, in order for this video to happen, in order for me to read this amount every day, I have to have the audiobooks in order to like, make up that counter, you know? <laughs> because I have to listen while I'm doing makeup or whilst I'm cooking. This book is very voicey nonfiction in terms of like, it's very full with the author's emotions and the author's opinions. And the audiobook narrator they've chosen has times up by 10. <laughs> the audiobook narrator of this is so like affected. Is that the right way to say it? Like it keeps saying stuff in a very interesting way. Like she'll laugh in the, <laughs> in the middle of saying stuff. It's getting weird. I don't know how to explain the way that she speaks, but it's like, sometimes it goes <laughs> Like trying to be funny. I don't know how to explain it. I really, I don't know how to explain it. You have to hear it to understand. <laughs> I needed to like bookmark some point in the audiobooks so I could play it to you. I looked up, the audiobook narrator narrates a lot of like women's fiction. I hate that, I hate that you know, terminology. But if you saw, let me find some of the covers. <laughs> this is important investigative work. Right, this is very small on the screen. <laughs> but these are some of the other books that this author has narrated. And like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I scrolled through this the other day, there's a lot of books that look like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I think that can help you understand the, uh, the tone that this audio narrator is striking. But anyways, in terms of the book itself, I think it's very, very interesting. So far in terms of like forensic details with Agatha Christie, we have covered fingerprints, trace evidence, guns basically, and documents and handwriting. And it is very interesting. I really, really appreciate the author not spoiling things. There's no spoilers in this, which, you know, I've been very excited to read Lucy Worsley's Agatha Christie book, but apparently there's spoilers fucking everywhere. So there's no spoilers in this. And I do think it is interesting, but there's just something about the writing that I'm not loving. I don't think it's like the best written nonfiction you I've ever read, right? I think writing style, writing quality is still as important in nonfiction as it is in fiction in terms of the way that you've put that information together and the way that you convey the information. And I just don't know if I'm like obsessed with it. It's fine at the moment, it's sitting like a 3.5 or a four. It's very, very interesting. It's making me want to read more Christie, like absolutely right this second. I'm really enjoying it. But like as a piece of nonfiction, I'm not like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever read. You know, it's incredibly interesting to me <laughs> and my niche interests, 
but I don't, yeah, I don't think it's like out of this world incredible. So I'm going to continue reading it tonight. There's moments where I feel like it is having to bulk out certain elements of information with like other real life cases or, you know, there was one, we had a whole long chapter on guns and it's like, Christy didn't like guns. She didn't, uh, she didn't use them all that often or her knowledge of them wasn't the best, but let's have a whole <laughs> chapter on them. Like, I feel like there was moments where it's reaching a little bit and trying to pad out the book and it could have been shorter and tighter and really focused on Christy and there's moments where I feel like I mean listen a wider forensic knowledge is still needed and, and important and interesting like it's needed for you to understand everything else that it's saying like this this guy invented this forensic research or whatever but sometimes I just feel like it's the weaving of the different things it's trying to bring together isn't necessarily like perfect does that make sense also, I know that like most of the time I'm in the shadow of my camera and I film on this spot. I need to change that. Hello. I have read today so far for, where's my timer? About three hours. So I'm probably not gonna check in again tonight. I'll include a screenshot. Here's my screenshot of me finished reading tonight. JK, I actually ended up reading for like an hour longer than I was meant to just very slowly. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow once I've finished finished murder isn't easy. Okay, friends, I ended up reading this a lot slower <laughs> than I usually read. I think just because it's nonfiction, I really end up rereading parts of this and like taking my time with it and really slowing my reading down. So today I have read for three hours and 30 minutes, but since I overread last night, I think, I mean, how much was I supposed to read yesterday? Four hours and four minutes. So I overread by like an hour in a bit yesterday. So yeah, between last night, the, mo the more that I read last night, I've read what I was supposed to today. Sorry that the lighting isn't ideal, by the way. Is that better? <laughs> I don't know. Tom's got my ring light, so uh, we're having to deal with natural lighting. <laughs> it's the life of a day for I. I enjoyed this. I'm going to give it a 3.5. I think the reason I really had to slow it down was there is something with the writing that was not... 100% doing it for me. It just took me a lot longer to read than something, I, this is a topic I'm so interested in. There was just something about the writing that meant I had to slow it down in terms of my reading. One thing I don't think I told you that was so interesting, hang on. I think it was at the start of the guns chapter. It talks about how, ah, are you ready for this? Cluedo was partially inspired by, and then there were none. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but... I've connected them. Originally, when the game was originally devised, it had 10 guest characters, the same number as how many there are, in, and, there were none, and then there were none. And it also had more weapons in the final edition, and many of the weapons also featured, and then there were none. <gasps> There was a bottle of poison, an axe, and a hypodermic syringe, which are all included in the original game and will all cause a death in Agatha's book. Agatha even jotted down an idea for a Cluedo-themed murder mystery story. Like, my worlds are just converging. My worlds are converging. That made me so happy to find out. But anyways, yeah, the whole forensic side of this was very interesting. It's a topic I don't know a ton about. I found it interesting, but like, it took me a long time to read it. <laughs> it took me a long time to read it. There was just something about the writing that didn't 100% vibe with me. So I don't know if I'd read more nonfiction from Carla Valentine. It just didn't 100% vibe. But I still think if you are a big Christie fan, this is an interesting book. You know, it really brings to light her knowledge of forensics. However, like I said, sometimes I think it is struggling for things to say. Sometimes the, the source material is a bit lacking. <laughs> And it's like trying to make bigger points and it hasn't doesn't necessarily have the source material. It reminded me of when I was at uni and like I really wanted to make a point in an essay, but like I hadn't really read anything in any of my readings that really backed it up and I was like struggling. <laughs> I was like trying to bring in things that don't necessarily link up and like just really trying to get that um yeah, to get that to link up. So we're done reading for the day because we read over the past two days kind of the right amount. I could have read more. I think I haven't felt great. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that's very exciting life stuff, but it's also taking up a lot of my brain space and a lot of my energy. So I think I read these fairly slowly. Well, definitely the latter two. Night film, I think I did read quite quickly. And this is really the big highlight of the vlog for me because I don't think I would have read this anytime soon if not for this video. I think I would have put it off for years and years and years and I really, really, really enjoyed this. I cannot recommend it enough. In terms of how I found the experiment, 
at the start of it, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed knowing, I mean, that could also be there on my shorter reading days. I struggled more towards the end when I was reading more. But um, yeah, at the beginning I enjoyed it because I liked knowing I have to read for a certain amount of time versus I have to read a certain amount because often I'm like trying to read as quickly as I can but just saying to myself you just have to read for four hours and however much you read is however much you read I enjoyed but in the last past couple of days also I am not feeling very well I've had a really bad headache the past couple of days but the past couple of days I've been kind of like um what if I don't read <laughs> I just don't want to read and also the way that my personal reading goes is I'll often read for like six hours one day and nothing the next I don't read consistently amounts every day like sometimes I'll read loads over two days and then won't read anything for two days and so on and so forth so I think there were certain points where I was like I need a day of not reading and like doing other things in life you know but I think it's an interesting experiment don't know if I'll do it again <laughs> these two well, this one was not successful. This one was successful with a few caveats. And this one was a very successful read. So let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. But I had a lot of fun making this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know how long this is going to be. It's either going to be like really long or actually that, not that long. And that's most vlogs. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching for the end of the video. And I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.